Hey guys, what's your favorite vehicle from the Tomb Raider games? Is it the snowmobile from Tomb Raider 2? The quad from Tomb Raider 3? Maybe it's the motorbike from Underworld. With 13 vehicles to choose from, it's hard to decide. Let's take a look at all of the vehicles now. The first vehicle we get our hands on is the speedboat from Tomb Raider 2 during the Venice level. It's incredibly easy to drive, it handles well, and it's tons of fun. Swimming through the canals would have taken ages. This boat will whip you around in no time, and you will certainly enjoy blasting through boats, using the spare boat to detonate underwater bombs, soaring over ramps, and smashing through windows. Best moment? Forgetting to jump out in time. This was a great vehicle and one I'd like to see again, or a variant of, in the future. After trekking through the mountains in Tibet, we can rest our feet for a bit as we hop onto a snowmobile. It's perfect for speeding across the icy terrain and it's incredibly fun to drive. It handles perfectly, we can reach super fast speeds and provides instant satisfaction by running over baddies and pesky leopards. You can perform jumps and navigate difficult terrain while outrunning falling boulders. It's pretty loud, but we're accompanied by some upbeat music. A great vehicle. In addition to the snowmobile, players get a treat by switching snowmobiles later on with one of the baddies. Equipped with two mounted guns, you'll have tons of fun shooting enemies off of their snowmobiles. But be careful, this one crashes easily too. Next up is the quad bike, featured in Tomb Raider 3 in three different areas. Lara's home, the Nevada desert, and in India. For me, this one is the most fun to drive. It's incredibly easy to handle, it's fast, you can ride over virtually any terrain, and it's pretty hard to crash. We get plenty of time to drive this one. Lara has her own personal racetrack, complete with a quad bike on her mansion grounds, so you can return here to drive it anytime you like. The quad is great for making jumps and turbo jumps and running over various baddies. Don't drive it into the water, it explodes rather nicely, including Miss Croft. But on the plus side, you may get some of those nasty piranhas at the same time. During the London levels in Tomb Raider 3, we're introduced to the first underwater vehicle, the UPV, Underwater Propulsion Vehicle. It is incredibly useful, very practical, and fun to drive. For the most part, it handles well, but can be hard to navigate the tighter passages later on. It virtually eliminates the worry for air supply, so you can speed through the water but make sure you remember where the air pockets are, otherwise you'll run out for sure. The UPV can shoot harpoons at divers and crocodiles and is equipped with a bright light. Should Lara ever expand her basement aquarium, this is highly recommended as an extra purchase. Which vehicle was the hardest to control? If you're thinking the kayak, you're right. The kayak in Tomb Raider 3 was tons of fun to ride but had to be the most challenging vehicle in the series. You really need to master the controls quickly to ride down the rapids while avoiding rocks, steep falls, and slicing blades and other traps. You'll probably end up riding backwards for most of the trip, so you've got to learn to turn around the kayak quickly. You'll want to save extra med packs for this level in case you miss paddling over one of the green ropes to disable traps ahead. The scenery during this level is gorgeous, and if you find yourself staring at it, you can always opt out of using the kayak and trek on foot for most of the level. Back paddling up the rapids is tons of fun, but it would have been nice if you could shoot the crocodiles in some of the calmer areas. Then again, if you take your hands off the paddle for a second, you'll be washed away, so better keep focused for this vehicle. Up next is the minecart, the fourth vehicle in Tomb Raider 3. During Lara's trip to Antarctica in the RX Tech Mines level, we have the opportunity to ride three of these carts to navigate the mine. The mine carts really make this level fun, and instead of riding each one to the next location, you've got to keep your eyes open for drills, large gaps, tight turns, and girders. Lara is equipped with a wrench that you can use to swing at the switches to change the direction of the track. The minecart offers a challenge at one point with an incredibly tight turn. You've got to slow the cart just right to avoid crashing Lara into the wall and to make the next jump. The only problem with the minecart was if you realized you have got on the wrong one, you'd have to complete that entire section again to return to the beginning. But isn't that what made Tomb Raider awesome? Non-linear level design. 
The fifth location in Tomb Raider 3 includes the inflatable boat in the Antarctica level. This boat was also fun to drive, but the speedboat in Tomb Raider 2 beats this one for sure. What made it fun was having to get it into the water. You had to explore the RX Explorer to find the switch to release the boat. It was practical, fun, easy to handle, and prevented Lara from freezing to death should you decide swimming might be faster. It would have been nice to be able to shoot with her free hand while driving, as it was sometimes time consuming to stop the boat, jump out, and return enemy fire. During Lara's visit to Valley of the Kings in KV5 in Tomb Raider 4, Lara gets the keys to a Jeep. It's incredibly fun to drive, handles very well, and is a great way to explore these levels. Best of all, it's accompanied by fun, upbeat music every time you put the key in the ignition. Navigating the sandy terrain is a breeze in the Jeep, and running over baddies and breaking the supports and platforms is addicting. Further challenges make the Jeep even more enjoyable, avoiding rolling spike balls, deep pits, and grenades from baddies. You can drive recklessly without the worry of too much damage, but be careful on upper levels. If you drive off the ledge, you'll blow up the Jeep and poor Lara. The next vehicle is the motorcycle and sidecar, also in Tomb Raider 4, during the Cairo levels. The Stark level is a perfect match for the motorcycle. It is equipped with a bright light that illuminates the dark streets. It's very easy to drive, but sometimes it can feel a bit bulky with the sidecar that doesn't really serve a purpose. This is also the first vehicle that you can upgrade later on with nitrous oxide, which is essential to make a tough jump. As with all the other vehicles, it's lots of fun to run over baddies, jump over pits, and crash through barricades and fall through breakaway floors. We get lots of time to master the motorcycle as we come back to it a few times. Maybe next time Winston can come along for the ride and make use of that sidecar. The EDS Extreme Depth Suit is the only vehicle in Tomb Raider 5. Lara goes to quite the effort to retrieve batteries and an aqua lung to power the suit. A mini sub shoots torpedoes at Lara, but luckily the suit is equipped with flares that you can use as a decoy. The suit is easy to use, the controls are the same for swimming, but some tight spaces can be problematic as the suit is somewhat bulky. As soon as you locate the spear, rocks knock off Lara's air supply and you get a bit of an adrenaline rush as you try to make your way back to the boat before you run out of air. Overall, a fun addiction to the game, but my only complaint is the short time that we actually got to use the suit. The 11th vehicle is a motorcycle in Tomb Raider 7. We get many opportunities to drive it in Peru, Japan, and Kazakhstan. The controls are very easy and it's fun to drive. A nice bonus is being able to shoot at enemies with one hand while driving. There's tons of terrain to cover, so it definitely feels like you've had ample time to drive the motorcycle throughout the game. It's incredibly easy to take damage, crash, but was slightly disappointing that there wasn't a big explosion like in previous games. Not only can you shoot at baddies, you can switch targets if there are multiple ones in sight, and you can also shoot at propane tanks to help damage the baddies as well. While driving, you can drive over med packs to pick them up, but it felt more like a Mario Kart sort of game. In Japan, we get a different model of motorcycle. It's sleek and sexy, but we only get to use it for a brief moment to jump rooftops. Later on in the game, during the Kazakhstan levels, we ride once again over snowy terrain, riding over bridges, icy ledges, jumping over a train, and finally landing on the train itself. My only complaint is the level was so linear that you were forced to drive forward the entire time and it took away from being able to explore the area. The other vehicle in Tomb Raider Legend is the forklift in England. It is useful and practical, excellent for moving heavy crates, stacking them, breaking through walls and spear traps. An odd vehicle to see in the games, but it made sense for the level. The 13th and final vehicle to date is the all-terrain motorbike in Tomb Raider Underworld. It is very similar to the motorbike in Legend, but the look has been updated and it's easier to drive. Unlike Legend, we now have full control of the bike and where we want to go, so it makes it more fun to explore. It's great for getting from temple to temple, running over baddies, jumping over large gaps and bridges. 
It can be difficult to make tight turns during a timed run, but offers a good challenge. The best moment? Running over and popping the gigantic spiders. Also, we can shoot once again while driving, but I personally preferred running over my targets. Alright, those are all of the vehicles that we've seen so far in the Tomb Raider games. Which one's your favorite? My vote goes for the quad, but they were all definitely tons of fun. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in my next video.